the public protector, uh, confirming that uh, it will be probing President Cyril Ramaphosa for a possible breach of uh, the Executive Ethics Code. This follows a letter from the suspended ANC member of Parliament, Mervyn Dix, uh, who, is, uh, uh, who laid that complaint to Scopa over the leaked audio where Ramaphosa is, sir, is, is heard saying that uh, he's aware that ANC members used state funds for ANC campaigns. Let's get uh, uh, some uh, detail now from the spokesperson at the Public Protector's Office, Oba Sekhalo. Mr. Sekhalo, thank you very much for your time. Are you able to tell us uh, who the complainant is here? Is it Mr. Mervyn Dirks? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Mgambi. That is correct. Um, Mr. Mervyn Dirks is the complainant in this matter. Um, he filed the complaint uh, last night, or at least he received it last night, although he had uh, filed it earlier, but it couldn't reach us. It was only when it was brought to his attention that we haven't got the complaint that he resent it last night. And uh, as he correctly points out, he alleges a breach of the executive ethics code on the part of the president based on that leaked audio file of a, a meeting that is alleged to have been that of the governing party, where in he he is, um, or he appears to be saying that uh, uh, he's aware of some improper conduct that has taken place in respect of public funds. Mm. And so um, Mr. Derek's complaint basically centers around that to say if the president indeed knew about this, was it not incumbent upon him then to take the necessary action to ensure that that kind of conduct is stopped in its tracks? And he alleges that if it is true that indeed he uh, he failed to take action. He may have, uh, you know, contravened the ethics code and that he may have also breached his oath of office. Yeah. So he wants the public protector to look into that. We know that uh, as per the country's laws, Mr. Sekhalwe, if anyone is aware of wrongdoing, particularly around the use of public funds, that person has the obligation to report that to the police so that it can be investigated but make it clear for us what compels the public protector uh, to get involved uh, in the manner that she will be involved now given that she is in receipt of this complaint from mr dirks thank you uh, you mentioned that uh, people are compelled to approach the police and that is very important because in this instance, the public protector will not be investigating any suspected or alleged criminal conduct. She will be looking into issues of ethics empowered by the Executive Members Ethics Act, in terms of which the public protector must, and I must emphasize the word must, investigate any alleged breach of the Executive Code of Ethics. And this complaint must emanate from a member of parliament or a member of the executive. And uh, the public protector, in terms of that law, has got 30 days within which to complete that particular investigation, failing which she must uh, inform the president that she hasn't been able to conclude it on time and that whenever the report is ready, uh, it will be uh, passed on to uh, the relevant authorities. The next step, therefore, from the public protector's side, what are your expectations from the office of the president? Well, given what I've just outlined, that we are compelled to investigate, the public protector will immediately launch the investigation, and that will entail uh, interacting with all of the parties involved, uh, requesting their responses and, and whatever else, and checking that against the relevant prescripts, in this case being the, the ethics code itself, uh, and, and also uh, Section 96 of the Constitution, from which the, the Act and the Ethics Code flow. It, uh, that section of the Constitution um, goes into detail about the conduct expected of members of the executive, and members of the executive, of course, uh, are the president all the way down to NEC. Yeah. Mr. Sakhalwe, I can't not ask you this question. Some have suggested, particularly in regard to this matter being taken to SCOPA, which is a, a, a parliamentary um, committee, 
And they have suggested that what if the committee is getting itself involved in internal ANC uh, factional battles? Is the public protector not concerned here, having faced similar accusations uh, before that she is getting herself involved in ANC factional battles. Is that not a worry for her office? Well, an institution such as the public protector uh, and the function that um, it is entrusted with will always find itself in, in the crosshairs of one or the other uh, political uh, organization, if, if I may put it that way, because essentially what the act that I've just outlined to you does is that it gives ammunition to members of parliament, and in most cases those who sit on opposition benches, to hold to account uh, their counterparts who also happen to be in cabinet. And, and you will understand that the two are essentially competing to influence public policy, and they are politicians by nature. So even if the public protector were to uh, exonerate any party that is alleged to have breached the, the, the executive ethics committee, there will be some uh, uh, political section that is unhappy with that and it will allege all sorts of things. It doesn't start now, it has always been the case. In the case of the previous public protector, for instance, uh, the accusation was always that we are pandering to the Democratic Alliance. Now things have changed, it's another thing. So it's something that we have no control with. What we are concerned with is what we are empowered by law to do, and uh, it's a complaint, and the law, as I have said, compels us to investigate it. We are not concerned with uh, uh, party political factions and all of that. Oh, Basakhalu speaks for the Office of the Public Protector. Thank you very much for your time.